Hey everyone, um, it's a while since I've made a video and this one's a little bit overdue. Um, in the last couple of releases you would have progressively seen value curves rolled out and I know Sean touched on them briefly in one of his regular uh, videos but I think um, it probably deserves a little bit more attention to sort of try to explain exactly what value curves are and how they work. There's been enough confusion on some of the effects that it's clear that it's not immediately obvious to people. So I wanted to start the demo actually with uh, Gill's new effect, which is the, um, uh, the fill effect. Um, his effect is extremely simple. You can control its direction and you can control its position. Um, and it looks kind of pointless because you, you slide the, the slider up and down and it just changes how far up the tree, in this case it's filling, but that's all it does. And it runs for five seconds here and it just sits there. Um, the value curve button is this button here and it appears, you can see there's one up here and there's another one over here and some other effects have got a lot more of them. And what the value curve is, is attempting to do when you click on it the first time to enable it is it's going to allow you to change effectively change the value of this slider over the duration of the effect so this effect runs for five seconds so you can read this this point here is at zero seconds and this point over here is at five seconds and during that time it's going to sit at 73 out of 100 in terms of how far up the tree it is. So 73% of the way up the tree, it's going to fill it in and it's not going to change during the duration of the effect, which is kind of boring and pointless. Uh, the power of this, however, lies in these options here. So we can get something like a, a sine wave. And what this says is at the beginning of the effect, it should be zero or very close to it. It should progressively move its way up to 100 or all the way to the top of the tree and then it should start to ramp its way down and at five seconds it should be all the way down at the bottom of the tree again. Um, and so if you click OK, now you see what happens is it does exactly that. It fills the tree up and then it goes down and then it goes back around and redoes it again and so forth. And so effectively this slide is now disabled because it's not actually in control anymore. This curve here is now in control. At the beginning of the five seconds it starts at the bottom, moves its way up to 100 and then all the way back down to zero. Um, if you click on it again it disables it and now we're back into control over here and so we can slide it back up and down again manually. We click it again, up pops the dialog box. It still has the curve we had last time um, and, and we can start to play with it. Now each of these curves have got various sliders that let you control it. So you can decide where in the phase to start, whether I, this, I actually want to start at the top and come down and then go back up. You can control how far it goes up and down. You can control how often it goes up and down or you know whether it's just going from zero to halfway up and down again. So here it's going to go halfway up and down, up and down, up and down repeatedly. So hopefully that gets you a feel for what the value curve's doing. Uh, there are lots of different ones. Um, uh, you, can, uh, you can get a logarithmic up. Actually, yeah, there's an exponential up. It's probably a better one. So this one's going to stay low. It's going to slowly increase and then it's going to shoot up at the end. Um, so hopefully you get the idea. So one of the other powers of the value curve is that having chosen something like a ramp, ramp up and hold, you can come up here and say, actually, I want to make it custom. And when you make it custom, this now becomes editable. So you can grab one of these endpoints and move it around. You can click anywhere in the middle and it will create a new point and let you move it around. Uh, you can, having selected that point, delete it and it will go away. Um, you can press Ctrl Z um, and it will move it as back as well. Um, so there's an undo on it. And when you've done this, it basically will follow that curve just like before, except now it's a custom curve. It's not just a function, 
but it will let you do uh, a custom curve. Now the custom curves are limited. Um, you can actually only have 40 points across this duration. So it's not infinitely variable, but it definitely does give you a great deal of control. Um, uh, look, I, I don't think there's any reason to go and show you all of these. Um, you, you can do them at your leisure um, to get a feel for them. Um, so what does it do for you though? Well, let's have a look at a sine wave here. So here's, here's a wave control, uh, the wave effect up here, um, and it's sliding along, and there's a bunch of these here. So one of the things that we can do is we'll just apply the sine again onto this, and what happens is it comes in and goes back out like a spring. It's kind of cool. We can also play at the same time with the thickness. Um, maybe what we want to do is we want to ramp it up and down so it gets thick as it goes in and thins back out as it goes out um, things like that um, you can also make it uh, let's ramp it up and down let's uh, however not ramp it up as high um, and what this is going to do is it's going to make it bigger so it makes it not only come in but it starts small and it goes really big and so it actually looks more like a spring um, etc so that, look there's a whole bunch of these you can do it with blur you can do it with the brightness so this effectively acts like a, a fade in and a fade out um, the rotate and zoom controls although there are a bunch of um, uh, presets here um, that control how the rotate and zoom works there are actually a whole bunch of these uh, controls here and you can see that as you selected that preset it's set a several of these value curves and it's created a curve that it's it's then applying um, and you can go in and you can edit those and change it to be however you want it to be um, not every effect has it yet um, uh, I've added it to a whole bunch of them. Uh, some of them are really not suited to it and, and won't receive a value curve. Others look like they should work, but actually when you look at how the code's been implemented, they actually don't work very well at all, and so I've left them off. Um, and there's some that, to be honest, we haven't got to, or some that we're still contemplating whether we really want to add the complexity of a value curve. Um, I'd suggest you don't go nuts with them. Um, I think there are definitely times when they're, they're useful. Uh, they will make your XML file a little bit larger because there's a whole bunch of extra data that has to store about the value curve. But otherwise, look, they're fine. Um, and I think they create an extra dimension of variability to a lot of the effects, which uh, otherwise isn't available. So have fun, guys.